50,000 or 20% equity stake in the business. There's no product in the world like this product. It's a fireproof mat that goes in front of your stove that catches hot coals. I feel for international sales, I need somebody that will help me market the product. Ready to go, Mick? If I get investment, we'll be able to scale up the business uh, rapidly. Hi, Dragons. My name is Michael Slattery from a company called Ember Mats Limited. I'm here today seeking 50,000 euros for a 20% equity stake in my company. With me today is Ross Burke, my nephew, who's a product designer. Hi, Dragons. About two years ago, Michael purchased the stove for the first time. And shortly afterwards, he began to experience a problem. Hot coals were falling out and burning his floor. After failing to find a product that would solve the problem, Michael decided he was going to solve it himself. As a product designer, I was able to help Michael to develop a product. Ember is essentially a fireproof rubber mat which you place in front of your stove when refueling. This prevents hot coals from making contact with your floor. Ember is made from natural rubber to which we have added a special fireproofing agent. That means that Ember is able to withstand 2000 degree temperatures. This is something we would now like to demonstrate for you. This could be dangerous. Now, although you can see a residue from the blowtorch, once we wipe that away, Ember is completely intact. Thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to show Ember to you today. And we'd be very happy to answer any questions you may have. Hi, Michael. Hi, Ross. How you doing? What price point are you selling your mat? Ember, yeah. Right. Uh, retails for twenty-four ninety-five. And have you got any in any shops yet? I have about 40 shops. And what are sales like in those shops? I've sold about 600 units. And is it going in in a stand like this? I've put in about 10 of these stands. That's a good idea. 600 units across how many stores? About 40 stores. About 40. Some are taken 20, some are taken 10. And it retails, you said, at 24.95. Yes, sir. How much are you selling it into? Uh, 12.75. And how much does it cost you to make it? Well, at the moment, 5.25. You're saying at the moment, because you believe you'll do better on volume? Absolutely. Any idea what the size of the market is? Uh... 700,000 stoves in Ireland. Lads, is this a particular problem with stoves? You're, you're putting in new fuel and some of the existing burning fuel falls out. Is that what happens? Well, that's what happened to me. It's not just on the, the stove itself. When you're opening the stove, if you're cleaning out the stove, if you're pulling out the ashes, it makes the whole uh, cleaning process much better. The problem that we were trying to tackle is hot coals burning the floor. Tell me a little bit about your background. What were you doing before uh, you became Ember? I'm 35 years in the hardware business. You'd know all the hardware people? I know every hardware shop in Ireland. So you've a route to market then? The market is there for the product. Where is it manufactured? The actual rubber is coming from India and the pegs are made in cork and the packaging is done in Waterford. Well, Michael, you have my interest. Uh, I uh, think you've come up with a very interesting product. I'm not sure I've seen a stove anywhere that there isn't a mark on the hearth within a a sort of a foot of it. Definitely there's a problem here. You seem to have a solution. Okay, let's hear your uh, projections. Okay, uh, this year in 2016, uh, 348,000 turnover with a net profit of 75,000. 2017, 548,000 and 97,000 profit, net profit. And year three, 888,000, 240,000 net profit. Are these all independent stores you've spoken to? Or have you gone to any of the big chains? I've gone to all the big chains. Right. And the attitude was, try them in some of the stores. Mm -hmm. And we'll see after that. I'm actually doing a show next month in Germany, in Cologne, uh, in the hardware fair, uh, that I hope to launch the product there as well. Could I see some of the packaging? Absolutely. With Gavin already declaring an interest, Michael and Ross have made a confident start. Have you enough? It's two and a half kilos. Yeah. Gavin continues his questioning. And do you have certification on it at this stage that this is a safe product? I went about certification and it doesn't actually need certification in Ireland at the moment. But if we can export the product, we certainly need certification for some other countries. Well, I've got it tested and, and checked. So you're seeking an investment of 50,000 euro. 
Uh, how is that going to be spent? We've got a lot of interest in the UK, so we need to spend some money on marketing. We need to get more stock in, and I need to do the show in Germany. How much stock do you have? I have about 1,200 pieces in stock. It looks like you're aiming to sell about 14 or 15,000 units this year. No, I think it's about 25,000 pieces. Let's say 2,000 a month averaged over the year, roughly. Mm -hmm. How do you go from you know, very small numbers to, to 2,000 a month? In May, a number of the large buyers in Ireland will uh, make their decision for September. So your sales would start in September and you roll it out. So there will be 20 of these on a stand. It's costing the retailer 255 euros. And if there's 100 stores, you can see there's a 25,000 euro sale there. Between September, October, November, December, that's four months, you're going to sell 6,000 units a month? Probably, yes. Your peak months will be from September to probably March. It seems like a big step up. Have you seen a product before that's gone from zero to mega sales almost instantly? In the hardware business, it's very rare that anyone comes up with anything new. I feel this is the right product that will, will set me on my way. Michael, you're based in Waterford? Based in Waterford. You're in Stanley country as well, so yes. uh, have you spoken to them? Uh, do, do you see I did, any I did synergies a show, there? a house and home show, and Stanley were showing at the show, looked at the product, very, very interested in the product, but they said they'd have to do their own testing on the product if they were to sell it. Is there anything like this available internationally? No. At all? Nowhere. During the research stage, we saw a lot of customers who use what we now term as a sacrificial mat, it might last about three months. They replace it, get another one. That's a great phrase, sacrificial mat. <laughs> I know you talked, we talked, mentioned the word Stanley. Would you consider private labeling for them, putting their logo on, on, the, on the mat? I think it's a strong brand. You know, Ember is a nice name for the product. Yeah. You know. No, just if you're, if you're buying a stove and then it's easy to have a, a, an accessory product, you know, and we also have this and we also have that. It could yeah. be a, a nice upsell for a stove manufacturer and they already have the websites built. And All them things are very easily done. Guys, the problem, I'm having is getting from your very small number of sales to date to 6,000 units a month. It just seems like a bridge too far, so I'm out. I don't think I can add an awful lot of value to it apart from cash. That's probably not valuing my time enough. Um, I think you've got the contacts. I think really this is a finance issue. So uh, for that reason, I'm out. Okay, thank you. Michael, I'd agree with Eamon. Uh, you know, you, you've brought this from a prototype. You've, you've got a great product. I'm not sure you need a, a, an enormous marketing campaign to, to, to make this a, a success. I'd go it alone, to be honest, and hold on to your equity. So yeah. I'm out. Thank you. Michael, you have a hot product, as they say. I don't think you need an investor at this point. I think you should just see what the market's going to give back to you. And if it's selling, financing, it won't be an issue if you have strong orders. So for that reason, I'm out. Thank you. Michael and Ross may have impressed, but their first choice, Gavin, is the only dragon remaining. Why 24.95, Michael? I think it's a good price point. Price point is absolutely critical. It's in the recession years, any purchase over 15 euro required a phone call. Mm -hmm. the, the, in the Celtic Tiger days, somebody would wander into one of these big uh, DIY chain stores and uh, they'd go in to buy a bulb and they'd come home with a, a teak table and six chairs and a parasol. Ireland is in recovery, there's no doubt about that, but getting the price point right. You're satisfied 24 95 I think it's about the right price. Now, we have some retailers selling it for 29 95 Michael, I'm going to make you an offer for the full amount, €50,000 for 40%. Thank you. You want to think about it? I'll just think about it for a moment. And so Gavin offers Ember €50,000 for 40%, double the equity that they originally offered. Will they try to negotiate him down? Thanks for your offer, Gavin. If I was to reach the sales targets that I've set out today, would you be interested in lowering your equity in the next three years? There's a leap of faith here. 
Michael, I've made you an offer of 50,000 for 40%. You've asked, is there some way we can allow you to buy back the equity if you hit the, uh, the figures? What I'm going to ask you to consider is this. Let's do the deal, uh, 50,000 euro for 40%. And if this is as profitable as it's going to be, you're going to be able to afford to buy back that equity. Okay. Uh, you know, I won't be looking to hold on to it. Forever. Uh, I put the money in to get it back. Of course. Think about that. Yeah. I don't have to think about it anymore. That's fine. Thank deal. you, sir. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Well done. I was a hesitant walk over. <laughs> You're happy, yeah? I'm absolutely delighted. Good, good. Thank you very much. Gavin, that plastic rug could be a magic carpet for you. <laughs> He's in the industry. Yeah. I bought that more than anything else. Michael Ross, well done, congratulations. Tried a bit of hard negotiation there at the end, although Gavin wasn't really going to budge, was he, on the 40%? No, he wasn't, but when Gavin came back to me and said, well, he's not going to be there forever, so if we're making money, um, he will exit eventually. I hope you're not trying to get rid of him before he's even arrived. No, 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 <laughs> I'd be very happy to work with him. Well, well done, guys. You uh, did really well, and they're the best of luck with it. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thanks, Richard. Well Thank done. You.